All right, welcome back, YouTube. Um, the purpose of this video, I want to revisit cold bluing a little bit because I know that uh, some of you guys, yeah, I put up the recent video about uh, you know asking people what they really wanted to see, and I was quite surprised to see just how many people wanted to uh, see more refinishing and restoring uh, type stuff. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, I put up that cold bluing video quite some time back, and uh, I've been doing a lot of it ever since. So I wanted to share just a few of the little things that I'm, I'm doing a little bit different. One of the things I'm doing different is I've switched the product I've used over the years. Um, I don't really like the Birchwood Casey products quite so much anymore. I prefer this Brownells Oxford Blue, which is an excellent product. You don't have to be uh, quite nearly as anal with the metal prep as you do with the uh, Brownells or the uh, Birchwood Casey, I'm sorry. The Birchwood Casey product just tends to put a very thin bluing on there that just doesn't really have that luster that you're really looking for. Um, the Oxford Blue is a little more forgiving in terms of what it'll let you get away with. Um, believe it or not, you can actually blue right over existing bluing to a degree. Um, they even say that you can even have light surface rust and blue right over it. Uh, says it right on the container. We'll see. Uh, says right here to to retouch old blue res, remove excessive rust with fine abrasive cloth thin oil and thin rust need not be removed now with that being said you probably want to go ahead and remove that anyway let's get started enough talking um, you're gonna need uh, it helps to have like some denatured alcohol but if all you got laying around is some isopropyl 91 percent like this that's fine too to use as a uh, degreaser, it works fine. I like to have a can of uh, Croil laying around, which is an excellent oil. A little 4 alt steel wool, you're going to need that laying around. Uh, this piece is well worn out, it's the last one I got, I need to pick up some more. You're going to need some 240 grit sandpaper. Alright, you'll see why in a minute. You're going to need a set of forceps, like this. Doesn't matter what size, just as long as... Uh, the main thing you want to use the forceps for is to grab your cotton balls, like this. You want to use 100% cotton cotton balls, okay? Don't cut corners on those. You're going to want your pieces that you're wanting to re-blue here. Um, in this case, I've got a Finnish M91 barreled action that has seen much better days and is in really poor condition. Um, it's almost in the white as it is. I, I really don't have to do a whole lot of metal prep to this thing to get it right. And then I've got the Steyr M95 that Frank sent me that, uh, let me... I don't know how well you can see, but there's just a spot right here on the side of the receiver um, that needs some touch-up. Now, with that being said, the Brownells Oxford Blue is really, really good for touch-up. Complete re-blue, mm, you're going to have to spend a little bit more time and effort getting the metal just right in order for a complete re-blue to look good. You know, when it comes to re-bluing, there's always going to be those types of people that say, oh, well, you should only use a cold blue for touch-up, okay, you know, small touch-ups. Now, that very well, you know, make it be true to an extent. There are cold blue options that provide a much better complete refinish uh, than do the Oxford blue. If you go with, like, a traditional uh, rust blue, that's probably going to yield a lot better finish uh, in terms of a cold bluing finish um, without, you know, having to hot blue. They also make a product uh, called Belgian Blue, which is an excellent product. But I found the Oxford Blue, even on complete reblue, does an excellent job as long as you uh, are good with the metal prep. So uh, we've seen what all we need. Let's get started. I don't want this to be horribly long. All right, so the first thing we're going to do with this Brown Eyes Oxford Blue is we're going to do a touch-up on this Styr M95 right here. Okay? Now, again... The same rules apply as the video before, if any of you guys watched it. Always make sure you're wearing gloves so you don't get oils from your skin on your work. And also, you don't want to cross-contaminate. So, for instance, I've got this dry, clean, brand-new terry cloth that I'm going to take a little bit of this alcohol, and we're just going to wipe any surface oil or grease right off of that spot there. You know, and you and uh, this spot right here, we don't even have to take out of the stock. It's above the stock line, so this is an easy touch-up. Now, there's also, um, just to let you know, that if you took this to a gunsmith, 
they probably would charge you 40 or 50 bucks for a touch up but I'm gonna basically just show you guys how easy this is sorry for the traffic noise I mean I live off the road here all right so you can see we got a little bit of residual oil off of the metal now this um, spot has already been scored up pretty well so we don't have to worry about uh, hitting it with any sandpaper um, which technically is even easier all right so I'm just gonna take my Oxford blue you can't see me but I'm off camera here I got I'm gonna get a cotton ball my forceps now another thing with Oxford blue I want to tell you guys about is that you don't want to cross contaminate the bluing solution itself either so if you dip something in here and then and then touch it on this or whatever don't dip it back in there because what happens is um, as this is brought out of the container the oxygen tends to kind of activate it a bit so you don't want to leave the cap off this stuff too long it's just going to ruin the shelf life so just dip in there and get ju just a little bit of bluing solution it doesn't take a whole lot I probably got too much but that's okay All right, I'm going to cap off my Oxford blue and we're just going to take our cotton ball here I'm just going to go right over it. Just like that. Okay. We're going to let this sit up about a minute. I'm going to leave this same cotton ball with the blue on it out because we're going to use it again. We're going to go about four or five coats and get it nice and dark. And we're going to sheen over it with just a little bit of steel wool put a coat of oil on it and this piece is good to go so let me uh, let this sit up a little bit and I'll come back to it okay so it's uh, been a minute or two here I'm gonna take a clean terry cloth we're just gonna wipe off the excess doesn't take much in fact that amount where it's starting to turn kind of brown and streaky I actually probably let it sit there a little bit too long but nothing to cry about I'm gonna take just a little bit of steel wool Sheen it just a little bit there, and then we're going to follow up with more blue. You're just going to repeat this process until you get the desired result, okay? Which, in my case, you know, we obviously want it to match the rest of the metal, you know, because this is a touch-up. So we're just going to take our time and get the desired result, and uh, I'm just going to repeat the same process you just saw. As you let this sit, it's going to kind of like dry up and it'll turn kind of a dark blue and then eventually it'll turn kind of a brown that's rust starting to develop which it is technically a rust finish I suppose a controlled rusting um, so basically you want to wait about 60 seconds or so like the directions say wipe off the excess in one motion with a dry cloth and then you know it'll dry and then just buff it and just keep repeating that process like I said um, so I'm gonna keep doing this I'm on the same thing you just saw me do I'm gonna do that about mm, five more times and then we're gonna put a coat of oil on it and she's done one more thing that I wanted to uh, talk about real quick if you apply the bluing and it pulls up in little splotches on there chances are you've got some sort of grease or oil on the metal it should go on in a nice even coat you probably are not gonna be able to see ultra well um, I, I might need to fix the lighting a little bit, but anyway, if it, you know, if it splotches up or pulls up, chances are you've got oil. So that's just something to consider. Okay. We've gone over this about six times or however many times is necessary to get it to match the rest of the metal or, you know, whatever you're looking for. Okay. We've gone over it with some steel wool. I'm just going to take a little patch with some croil here and we're just going to put some oil on her right there. Um, I realize that you probably can't see this too well, so once this whole uh, project's done here uh, with the other Mosin, or the Mosin, I'll take it outside and show you hopefully some better shots of it. But there you have it. Put some oil on it. I mean, it's black as can be. I mean, a trained eye would look and be able to tell that it was a touch-up, but 99% of people are not even going to be able to tell.